As people of Elohim, you and I are called on to live by the discerning and the empowering of the Ruach of Kodesh. Otherwise, we will become people who are more animalistic and instinct-driven, being guided by our flesh. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number one of Torah portion, Kitetse. We begin in Devarim, chapter number 21 and verse number 10. When you go out to fight against your enemies, and Yahweh your Elohim shall give them into your hand, and you shall take them captive, and see among the captives a woman fair of form, and shall delight in her, and take her for your wife. Then you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall shave her head and trim her nails. Put aside the mantle of her captivity, and shall dwell in your house, and mourn her father and her mother a month of days. And after that you shall go into her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. I always get interesting looks from the ladies in our congregation when we study this section of Scripture. So what is this talking about? Am Israel was called to go into the land, and they were to annihilate the nations that inhabited the land of inheritance, the land of the Kenyan. They were to drive out the Jebusites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and all of those ites people. They were to put them under the ban, that is, that they were to slay man, woman, and child. To allow any of these to remain alive was to allow a festering group of people who would become a thorn in their side and would deceive them into idolatry in the days ahead. Sadly, that became the case. It is after Israel has completed this obligatory war, they were obligated by the command of Yah to fight this battle and to obtain all of the land of promise after they had built their cities, established their gates, placed judges in those gates, planted their fields, established a society based on the Torah, it was after that that they might find nations around them admiring them, commending them for such a society. They may even adopt the light of Am Israel into their own nation, and follow after the commands of Yah that their land would also be peaceful and prosperous. However, it was more likely that the nations that bordered and surrounded Israel would be condemning, aggressive, and threatening attack. Now Israel has the option of war. So we've had the obligatory war completed an optional war is now in front of them. If they indeed attack and overcome the enemy that has rose up as an adversary against them, among those who survive, among the captives, for Israel will be permitted here to take captives, an Israeli man may find a beautiful woman. Now, it was customary from my studies that women who lived in such situations would adorn themselves that if the men of their nation were defeated, that their captors would come in and find them attractive, desirable, and spare their lives. This is instinctive. They're just trying to survive. For the man of Israel, likewise, he is trying to survive. When one engages in warfare, especially of the hand-to-hand -hand combat variety that these men would have been engaged in, it's fight, flight, feed, or mate. We're living more instinctively than intellectually. We are reacting more than we're responding. This is a time where you don't have the privilege of considering all your options and weighing the advantages and disadvantages of how you're going to attack this man who is swinging a weapon at you. You need to react. You need to fall back to your training. You need to understand instinctively how you are to engage them and defeat them lest you also die. 
having been in that course of thought and that mode of operation for an extended period of time, a man of Israel looking at such a gorgeous woman, seductively arrayed, may reason in his mind, I want her. So in that regard, he is looking to be her captor. He is um, uh, victorious in battle. He is an aggressor. He sees her. She's a captive. I'm going to take her. She's mine. She's my prize. Otherwise, he may look at her, have pity upon her, and say, I will be a hero, a knight in shining armor for her. If he takes her home and makes her, her her his wife under either one of these instances or ways of thinking, the relationship is not going to be successful. No man can be a hero all the time. Every Superman's cape gets tattered, torn, and stained on occasion. He's going to, at some point, have rusty armor, a chink in it, and he's just going to be a regular guy. Will she love him if he's not a hero? Can he take that chance? If he doesn't think he can, then he will never really allow the real version of him to be seen by his wife. She will never love the real man. If she is but a captive to him and he is her dominating captor, he will never know who this woman is. She will always be afraid. She will be but a married servant or slave to him. Not a good situation. He'll never find the true beauty that the father may have instilled in her. He may never recognize the gifting that she has to work in and to, and to offer to the community around her. So in either case, neither one is positive. So the Torah offers a process. Take the woman home, shave her head, trim her nails, change her garments, and let her cry for 30 days. Now, to rid her hair is to take her glory from her. But she's exchanging the glory that is to be admired from among the nations to grow new glory that is that from the Most High. The word for hair in Hebrew is interesting. It is the word se'ar. It means not only hair, but that which is rough and bristly. The root word se'ar means to shiver, to bristle, to be, to exhibit horror or fear, fear, excuse me, or to be stormy and tempestuous. This process brings this woman to a place where she's getting rid of this disposition of anger and the stormy attitude. She trims her nails. Again, the word sephora in here for nails not only talks about uh, the nail, but a point, a stylus point, that which scratches and claws. It's taking the fight away, the aggression. She's getting rid of her garments of seduction, and she's taking on the garments of modesty and covering. She's getting rid of the the fondness of what was her family and the old culture, and she's beginning to be cleansed through her tears for a new way of living. Now, it's very likely that this uh, skilled warrior on the field is going to come home and see a weeping bald woman crying and in regular clothes without all of the, the glamour and the makeup for 30 days and he may change his mind. If so, he is to free her, and she is to become a woman of Israel. He is not to harm her in any way. Otherwise, he's getting a look at who she really is, knowing her real heart, and seeking to bring her into a place of elevation. Now, there's going to be cultural problems. There are going to be issues. But at least now he knows who she is, or at least he has the opportunity to know who she is. The bride of Messiah has been found resident among the nations. We need this cleansing. We need this washing. Because Messiah wants to know us, and we want to know him. He is truly a knight in shining armor.
and he's always the hero. We'll talk more tomorrow. Until then, shalom.